y'all still bills what's the deal man i just finished this very much so short day at work i'm heading to the castle right now but peep game man i want to talk about motherfucking josh taylor man um not even so much about the fight because i've never seen jack catterall fight and I, I think this kid is really gonna meet destruction in front of josh taylor man it's just this dude just seems to have a mean streak about him bro like like it, it it's not gentleman like it's not gentleman like it's a you know he got the mean mug on he always looking at his opponents like even when we just program you gotta think man motherfuckers talk that shit about all oh, man he, you know these euro bums and this and that and the third Regis Progray is out the slums in New Orleans, man. Ain't shit sweet in New Orleans. Ain't shit sweet down there, bro. Them motherfuckers get busy. They call it job. It's a reason they call that shit Chopper City, man. Ain't shit sweet about New Orleans. Josh Taylor wasn't giving a fuck about none of that shit, bro. He was just, you know, he was, yeah, he was mugging that nigga the whole time. And even Regis Progray, just, he kind of got this swag and his demeanor to him. It's like, like, all right, I'm going to fuck you up. So even he kind of had, you know, he's smiley and, and, you know, in spots and they face offs and everything. And Josh Taylor is just kind of like, yo, bro, I'm just really ready to get in there. I wish, the, I wish we, I wish tonight, I wish right now we was fighting instead of talking. That's Josh Taylor's demeanor, man. And it's kind of menacing. Not even kind of, it's very much so menacing, man. Like, dude just don't seem to be playing no games, man. Like, homeboy is not sweet. He ain't for the bullshit, man. And I'm like this. I'm like this. Because I was once again listening to Ring IQ. Shout out to Ring IQ and the panel, man. I love that. I love that channel and that panel, man. Them is cats that I actually go to. I go to them for a lot of my boxing analysis, man. Even though we don't always agree, I, I, fuck, with, I fuck with him and I fuck with that panel. But they said something real profound, man. And I know this is going to rub a lot of people the wrong way, but I'm more excited about a Josh Taylor versus terrence crawford fight than i am about bud and spence at this point in time i honestly am it's just it's too much politics and bullshit and smoke and mirrors going on over there at the pbc even now they talking about you know spence is talking about yeah i fight terrence now you know all this extra shit bro like it's not at a fever pitch no more even though I still think it's the biggest fight in the, for the welterweight division, it's not like at a fever pitch as, as as it once was. It's not. And it's just like, ah, uh, you know, all right, cool. They gon' they gon' they gon' they gon' box. I right, bet. All right, cool. It ain't like hell yeah like it once was. And even if they do sign them contracts, it'll be like hell yeah. But it be it ain't gonna be like hell the fuck yeah. Finally. Like let's go. It's more like ah, uh, like hell yeah. But it's just that excitement to it because it's just it's run its course, man. If Spence goes in here and even if he wins against Ugas, if he looks, if he looks, you know, subpar, it's gonna it is gonna take away the sting from it because people are gonna say, man, well, this ain't Spence from three years ago. This ain't the Spence that fought Kill Brook. This ain't the Spence that fought whoever. This ain't the Spence that stopped Lamont Peterson. This ain't the Spence that. Uh, 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 dug deep and beat Sean Porter on points. This ain't that Spence. It's going to be something else to It's going to be some bullshit to it that's going to take away from the fight. It's going to take away from the aesthetic of the fight. And it's just like, you know what, man? I'm, I'm not, I'm not cool because I do want to see the fight. But at this point, like, I wouldn't be mad if a motherfucker said, I'd rather see Ugas and Crawford because we know Ugas at the moment. Ugas is off of his career, his career best win, and he hasn't really shown any signs of wear and tear. He ain't shown none of that shit. He's still the same Ugas. So in order, for, I think in order to resurrect that 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 excitement that once surrounded that fight to the point like where it was two years ago, Spence will have to go in here and drop Ugas, knock Ugas out, or just completely dominate him like he did Danny Garcia. If it's a close fight, it's going to be like, uh... Even though I don't think it should be like that, because I think Ugas is a quality operator, and he is a legitimate threat in this fight. So, 
you know, everything surrounding that fight with Bud and Spence, I'm kind of like, yo, man, I, I, I wouldn't even mind seeing a Josh Taylor over Bud and, over Bud and Spence. I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Taylor, Ter Taylor versus Terrence versus Bud and Spence. I wouldn't mind seeing it, man. I, I, I wouldn't mind it at all. At all. Because Josh Taylor is nice with it, man. Like Josh Taylor is. And everybody keeps talking about he gonna, you know, his bud is gonna stop him. I don't like he's gonna beat the shit out of that. I don't know. I, I don't know. They making it seem as if Bud is gonna go in here and just steamroll this dude. And I don't think that's the case, man. Motherfuckers is really acting like Josh Taylor don't get busy. You know who else I would love to see Josh Taylor up against? Jerron Ennis. I would love to see Josh Taylor against all of these up-and-coming welterweights because he's already established. Not as a welterweight, but just as a champion, a under, an undisputed champion. Shit, after Bud is Josh Taylor, the ne who's the next one up to capture that undisputed crown. I would love to see, I would love to see Jerron Ennis versus a Josh Taylor, a Virgil Ortiz versus Josh Taylor. I think that shit would be fireworks. I think that shit would be fireworks. And those are the fights that he should be looking to make, man. Like, um, I don't think that any of the PBC cats would be looking to fight Josh Taylor. Yeah, I, I, I genuinely don't think that. I, nah, nah, they would they would do their best to keep them away from him because he brings a lot of the same qualities that Bud does, as far as the switch hitting and being able to control distance. And when you do find a way to 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 penetrate his defenses and distancing. He can fight on the inside. He's real rough and rugged on the inside, man. For him to do what he did to uh, Jose Ramirez, yikes. Yikes. Like, Jesus Christ, man. Like, I, man, listen, I fuck with Josh Taylor, dude. I, I, I genuinely fuck with Josh Taylor, man. The dude is... The dude is a beast, man. I, I like, you know, the Tartan Tornado is something to be, you know, he's he's a, he's a force to be reckoned with, man. And as far as Teofimo Lopez and shit is concerned, his pop, yo, man, it's time for you to get away from your pops because your pops is really going to get you fucked up out here. Like, for real, for real, man. You don't... <sighs> when Canelo jumped up and he fought Rocky Fielding instead of going after the bona fide contenders and world champions at 68, that was the smart thing to do. Like I've explained it before, get you know, getting your feet wet in a division before you jump, you dive in to the deep end with the sharks. That's logical. That's the logical thing to do. You go after the weakest of the, of whoever of the division. You chip away at them, and then you see of uh, you gradually you know you get comfortable within that division. And all right, cool. I like my chances against him now, and I like my chances against him. That's the logical thing to do, man. Why is your pop still talking about you and Josh Taylor after you fresh off of a loss to George Cambosos? Why is he doing that? That makes no sense. Why am I going to sit here and put my son in a, in a position to get knocked out? Because I think Josh Taylor knocks Teofimo the fuck out. I mean, Teofimo at his best was against Vasily Lomachenko. And his success came due to the fact that Lomachenko went inactive for six fucking rounds. He went completely inactive. That was where Teofimo's best work came into play at. It wasn't his catch and shoot defense like I thought would play a factor in the fight. It wasn't that, it was his size, it was his punching power. It was all of that. And honestly, it still was never enough to deter Lomachenko from walking forward. He walked into the line of fire. He just didn't throw until the seventh round. I got him the second round. But the seventh round is when he started to open up. And once he started to open up, look at how the smaller fighter was able to exploit the holes in his game. I won't even say holes. I'll just say the lack of experience. You dig? Now, while Lomachenko doesn't have, a, man, I don't know their records. I don't Lomachenko. I don't think has that many more fights than Teofimo Lopez. You got to think this dude fought a champion two fights into his career, and then rebounded off of that loss to Salido and gave Gary Russell Jr. his first loss. Are we forgetting what type of beast Gary Russell Jr. is? Surely we're not doing that. 
Surely we are not doing that. So for Lomachenko to have you looking vulnerable in the way that you did, what do you think Josh Taylor is going to be able to do? You did? Because, I mean, I don't think Lomachenko has the... Uh, not Lomachenko, but I don't think Teofimo has the best feet. Nah, I just think when you study an opponent for so long and you're adamant on getting that fight, you're able to properly prepare for it, which is what he did. He had, to, he had intelligent enough feet to spin out and pivot with Lomachenko when he would cut those angles. He knew they was coming, he was expecting them, and he knew what to do in that situation when it happened. Not the same for Josh Taylor who can switch hit. Not the same for Josh Taylor who can control distance. Not the same for Josh Taylor who can fight on the inside. Josh Taylor can fight from all three distances, man. All three distances. And the dude is deadly. And you keep talking about some goddamn, we want Josh Taylor, we want Josh Taylor. No, honestly, you don't. Let's get him in there with some reputable 140, uh, uh, 140 pounders who aren't the world beaters but are still like yo that's that's a dangerous fight for him that's a dangerous fight for him what happened to him and barboza fighting you know what happened to him in, get him in there with a Saucedo or something like that pedraza someone of that elk man um um zapata shit vargas Get him in there with someone of that elk. You just, you trying to, you know, supersede all that and run right into Josh Taylor, and that's going to be problematic. If Teofimo steps in there with Josh Taylor in the now, he is getting stopped. He is getting stopped. Viciously and brutally stopped. Josh Taylor is not to be fucked with, bro. He is, he's not to be fucked with. And it's going to be catastrophic for Teofimo Lopez, given the fact that this man then came off of a fucking, a devastating loss. He, he, look, he look like Baby Bambi out there. He had no guidance in that fight with Cambosos. And you can't, and he can't even deal and accept the fact that he lost. He's still put looking to, play, you know, place the blame and point, point the finger any and everywhere else except at his goddamn self and his daddy. And y'all gonna put this man in there with motherfucking Josh Taylor? You entertaining the fight with Josh Taylor? Good luck. Ain't that what they said on taking? Good luck. So, yeah, man, I need to slow y'all roll, man. And yeah, I, I just, you know, I just, I, I gotta, I gotta give it up for Josh Taylor, man. I, I just, I, I, I think the dude is a beast, man. Um, I think the dude is a legitimate beast. And I'm looking forward to this Saturday, man. I'm supposed to go to a function in Kansas City, but I ain't going to be able to make it tomorrow. So I'm going to be tuning in to see the Tartan Tornado go to work, man. I've never seen Jack Catterall fight, but like I said, I think he going to crash this dude. Um, bad. Bad. Early. Get him up out of there early. and uh, I mean, that's how I see this fight going, man. I, I don't... I don't Josh Taylor has already proven that he's the mo he's the he's the you know he he's the he's the underboss of this Hall of Cost at 140 pounds, bro. Nobody is about to beat that dude at at junior welterweight. He's gonna have to step up to welterweight. He's gonna have to step up, and he's accomplished all this shit in under 20 fights. I think he got like 18 fights or something like that. He got like 18 fights. I fuck with the tartan, man. I, I honestly do, bro. I honestly do. So, I, I had to, you know... And the fact they keep disrespecting this man, bro. Like, they just... He's just getting disrespect from all places, man. Motherfucking... I, who was it? ESP? Oh, man. Was it Box Rex pound for pound? Let's have him way down in the rankings. They had him way down in the rankings, bro. Way down. I mean, I'm talking to the point where they got Jamal Charlo rated over him, bro. Like, what the fuck is this shit about? He just keeps getting disrespected. His European com uh, compatriots, they keep disrespecting him. They won't put, they just, it's like, it's, it's blasphemous to put this man top, number one or number two. It's blasphemous to them. 
We can't put you over Tyson Fury. Even though Tyson Fury only beat Deontay Wilder, we can't put you over. Now, you, Derek Chisora was a good win. Vladimir Klitschko, and I even give him Otto Wallin because I think, you know, I think Otto Wallin is a lot more. I think he's a lot. He's a lot more credible than what people give him. But nonetheless, he's not undisputed, man. That's what you, Wilder, Klitschko, Wallin, Chisora. All right, cool, man. Josh Taylor has beat some pro gray. Jose Ramirez, that's two champions right there to eventually become undisputed. We could talk about Victor Postal. We could talk about uh, 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 Ivan Baranchek, who was on a, who had, a, who just was just, who's fresh off of a fucking fight of the year slash knockout of the year. We get, we get, those are the type of, those are the caliber opponents that he's fought. Those usurp Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury, he beat two world champions, yeah, but Klitschko is still the better win, but, you know, as far as him and Deontay Wilder are concerned. Because Deontay Wilder ain't been through them gauntlets. Jose Ramirez and uh, motherfucking uh, Vic, uh, Re uh, Regis Prograde, those are two imminent threats in that division, even now. Even now. And they still have Tyson Fury place over. I think they even had Dillian White place over him. And Dillian White has never been a world champion, bro. It's like, man, come on. Come on. At the moment, I, would, I wouldn't even have Anthony Joshua over uh, 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 Josh Taylor right now. Y'all know I fuck with Anthony Joshua. But it's something to be said about collecting all the jury in your division, bro. Where's un No, it, I I'm undisputed. Nobody can fuck with me over here. This is, this is what it is. It's something to be said about that. And he just continues to get shooed off like just some nobody ass. All right, cool. Like, what else do I got to do? So he's taking all of that shit into these fights, man. And he, he's taking all of that. He's taking all of that shit into consideration. And he's just going to go out here and fuck some shit up. And I think once he gets to welterweight, it's going to be problematic for anybody who gets in the ring with him. Including Bud. Even though I think Bud wins the fight. But he's not about to go in here and watch no goddamn Josh Taylor. It's not happening, man. I'm telling you, man, that dude get busy. That dude gets busy. That dude gets busy, man. Him and Bud, I don't know what it is. I, they, 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 these is menacing dudes. These is men, like I said, y'all not from here, man. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, north side, born and raised. Bud is menace. His presence alone, when it's going there, he cool as a motherfucker. If he, you know, you just around him, whatever. You know, you niggas ain't on that shit, but if that if that drama get to popping and that adrenaline start rushing, he's not really no dude that you want to be around if you ain't on his side. I, I've seen it, bro. I've seen it. Leading dudes alone, man. Shout out to Bernie the Boxer, man. I seen him at Butler Gas YMCA on North 30th last night. I took my son to basketball practice, man. I'm over there. Hey, yo, man, I fuck with you, coach. Y'all appreciate you, appreciate you fucked with y'all man but yeah yeah man like josh taylor man I, I i had i had to make this video to you know i, I fuck with josh taylor bro i do i you know they're gonna stop playing with that dude and i think he really gonna shine when he move up to 147 pounds i think he really gonna shine when he gets up there and i would love to see him in the likes of a Jerron and it's because their dimensions are somewhat the same their dimensions are somewhat the same. Jerron and this is just a little bit more athletic than him. He's a little bit more athletic, a little bit more explosive. But Josh Taylor, I think, is he's just as complete. He's just as complete. And he's a little bit more compact with his punches, man. But, yeah, like I said, man, salute to Josh Taylor. I'm tuning in to watch the Tartan tomorrow, man. So that's how I'm feeling about it. Peace.